Good Monday morning, guys. I'm Jerry Miller, and welcome to Real Talk with Keith Smith. Thank you kindly for joining us, a Charlottesville, Commonwealth, country, and worldwide audience at our disposal on a glorious Monday to be above the mud. We thank Yes Realty Partners and Keller Williams Alliance for presenting the program, a show where you, the viewer and listener, can interact with the discussion by sharing your thoughts and perspective. So much we're going to cover on a Monday with the distinguished gentleman, Judah Wickhauer. Let's go to the studio camera and welcome the distinguished gentleman to the program. Keith Smith, good morning. Good morning, Jerry. Um, you know, we've been talking about inventory and and all kinds of stuff and housing and stuff for now 341 shows. But I'm going to do something here that I want to do. I want to look you dead in the face and apologize to you. Oh, come on uh, out. No, 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 no. This is important. This is important for me to do this. This is important for me to say it. Um, you would think after 341 shows, I would understand that you should engage your brain before you engage your Thumb. So to put a little context to this, folks, I made a, a tweet saying that I came up with the idea for Real Talk. And I heard I was, that from a handful of people, by and the way. That, well, I'm trying to apologize to you live, so you do me a favor and let me get that out. Um, and that's not true. You did. And uh, it was April of 2019, and all I did was say yes. Matter of fact, I think I said hell yes. And where do I sign up? And we signed up. So I wanted to start the show off by apologizing to you. It was, it was a case of thumbs engaging before brain engaged. So I apologize, I apologize uh, to you on that. No so, problem. My so, suggestion would be the delete button. Once you post something on Twitter, you can always delete it. I you do. don't have to edit it. You can delete anything on social so media. So now I'm learning. You I, know you can delete stuff on social media. Um, I, it's not forever. Once you hit publish, anything can be deleted. But why haven't you been telling me this has been on forever? And ever. But anyway, I just it was a mistake on my part. No problem. I wanted to apologize to you on it, on live on it. And I also kind of wanted to change things up a little bit today because I'm not so much interested in real estate today. Um, so how did you come up with that idea? Which idea? The real talk idea. How did, how, did, how did that enter into that brain of yours to go ahead and do this? Because this is important. People ask all the time. You know, and, and, and I was thinking what I was doing 20 years ago. Right. And where I was and what I was doing, because when you hit a certain age and you have grandkids, your 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 what's important to you changes a little bit. But in any event, how did you come up with that idea? I mean, content is king. I knew when I launched the business in 2008 that people were going to utilize social media to build awareness for brands and businesses. I was a broadcaster and executive producer for ESPN Radio and NBC 29 and writing a column five days a week for the Daily Progress. And I realized that putting words in a newspaper that went to people's driveway in the morning was not the future of how people were going to read. And I realized that talking about stuff in the community in a fixed time slot on Sunday morning from 11.30 to 12 on NBC29 was not going to be how people consume news. These phones that we had were much more than just about texting and phone calls. They were about building awareness and brands. And in 2008, I risked everything that I had to my name, and I took my personal life savings and I built a business. And in retrospect, it's turned out to be the best decision I've ever made outside of who I married, my wife. So, I don't know, you know, take a risk, paid out, had a little vision, the common characteristics of successful entrepreneurs, I suppose. But enough about me. Talk to me about the, uh, the well, weekend. Well, that's not a lot. Look, so, so what's interesting about that was is because I'm doing these bike rides now. We were talking off air, and, and yes, it's stupid. I'm training for a 100-mile race in, in, in October. Oh, I don't think it's stupid. <laughs> I think it's great. I'm just concerned about your health and yeah. your back in particular. I appreciate that. Because you did the 10-miler, uh, and you couldn't walk for a week. No, it was months. Actually. Yeah, yeah. But, I'm but, concerned about your back. Yeah, but I, I went to the doctor, so they gave me clearance to go ahead and do this. But it's interesting, so I'm listening to podcasts now on the bike. Yeah. And, well, I realized it this morning, what you do here, what we do here is so different because it's live. Yeah. Right? All these other podcasts, you can tell they're produced. They're produced. You can tell they're yeah. edited. You can tell that stuff. When we sit here and have this conversation, and I just think... This is really probably not being done anywhere in the country, if not the world. Well, no, no, no. I, is there a live Facebook? Yeah, there's, there's, li there's really? live Facebook. Really? Yeah. Live? Yeah. And that's it? It's not edited after the fact? I will say this. I will say this. Um, I can speak with confidence and conviction. Judah can speak on this as well. In the Commonwealth of Virginia, 
in this entire commonwealth, the state of Virginia, there is no social media network like the I Love Seville network that on set times each day, five days a week, is creating content and pumping it out there. The reason I know that is because we've been contacted by um, Virginia Commonwealth University about this. Oh, wow. And, and VCU has got a phenomenal advertising and branding program, and we're in preliminary discussions. Obviously, I got a, a lot on my plate of potentially ho um, hosting some kind of short course at VCU about the I Love Seville Network and this podcasting So network. your major at UVA was? I mean, uh, nothing tied to this. And that, So that was the, my next thing was, is, yeah. you know, as a kid growing up, I wanted to be a New York City cop. That's what I was because I grew up around every dad was a cop or a fireman and all that stuff. And I'm knocking on 60, awfully close to 60. If you would have asked, I would have been doing what I did for a living. And sitting here and doing this, I would have said you're off. Well, back in the 70s, I don't think this was even thought of on that end of it. But, you know, I just wanted to kick the show off, man. Uh, you know, I appreciate everything you do. I, yeah. I say that regularly. And uh, that was a stupid ass thing on my part. So I wanted to apologize. Sure but thing. Philip Dow watching the program. Love your shows when I can watch them. Thank you, Philip Dow. Chad Wood is asking if uh, you're accepting any offers on your house or not. Um, Chad Wood, um, always it's getting funny, people chuckling It's funny you here. should say that, Chad. Um, I love you, Chad. Yona and I looked at a house yesterday on, oh. that's on the market. on For Sixth. you personally? Yona and I looked okay. at a house for us personally on 6th Street, um, and we're now pivoting to maybe, you know, this will sound a little, um, uh, maybe will come out the wrong way. And, I, you know, again, this being live and just me being who I am, but we're trying to think, well, what if we can, we've been thinking about renting an apartment in town. Okay. And it's just the rent is so expensive. I can actually buy something and do, you know, some sort of long-term rental in the basement. Anyway, so we looked at something for sale on 6th Street that, uh, actually, not on Stonehenge, actually, right on the edge of 6th Street, walking distance from our office. Isn't that where you live? To there. Stonehenge? Yeah. Which Stonehenge? The one Are you sure it's called Stonehenge? No. Yeah, I think I don't think yours no. is Stonehenge. No, it's maybe maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, I think you're. I, I don't think yours is called. Yeah, because it's off of it's off of six stone. Is Stonehenge is off of Park and Raya. Well, I'd yeah. have to go ahead and look. You're, are you in the Elmore County? Are you in Elmore County, Jew, or City of Charlotte? Well, this, this is walking distance to the office. So yeah. So it's on list. There is another Stonehenge Street. Yeah, that's exactly right. Oh, the street. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, I said Stonehenge, but in any event, not the one in England, but Stonehenge. So one, I think one half is on the opposite side of Belmont Park, and the other one is on the opposite side of whatever. But anyway, we took a look at it for uh, for that very reason to go ahead. Is it and, is it active right now? Um, it was as of last night. Uh, Bill McChensey says Stonehenge is off Rio Road. Evidently, there are two Stonehenges in the area. Wow, this is drawing, uh, getting some interest here. Um, Chad said, so it sounds like Yona's winning the battle over there, Keith Smith. Chad, did you really think it was going to happen any other way? I think we all knew. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's married life right well, there. Well, no, so, yeah, so we negotiate just about everything. Good morning, Nicholas Erby. So, so it's, it's a compromise that we're, we're trying to reach because all in frank, frankness, you know, um, when, you, uh, when I was your age 20 years ago, you know, I had five companies, you know, it was all about my... my my definition of, of success was different than it is now. And mine is more wrapped around about ready to spend a few days with our grandkids up there. It's kind of wrapped around that a little bit. It's just very different. I want to be able to see, it's part of the reason I'm on the bike. I want to see my grandkids graduate. I want to, I really want to try to be around and present 20 years from now when I'm 80, when I'm 80, 80 years old. But we need, you know, when the kids come, we're, we're, a bunch of people now plus we got a new grandchild coming so we need a kind of place for everybody but then a place just for yona and i but i don't know we'll see how it goes so what's being discussed now is maintaining the residence at lake monticello so you can accommodate family while getting an apartment in the city of charlottesville so jerry and i are discussing this without mrs Smith. i don't see that ever <laughs> coming to fruition i think it will you, you think you're going to rent an apartment in the city of Charlottesville? No, I'm not going to rent an apartment. I'll buy one. But so I'm you'll rent. buy an apartment in the city of Charlottesville while still maintaining your residence in Lake Monticello, 25 minutes from the city of Charlottesville? Yeah, I know. Okay. So how about them Mets? Okay. Actually, Mets are doing great. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, But we'll see. We took a look at it. It was a first step. This was a big step for us. We it actually, is a big step. We actually, we actually took a look at a, look at home. 
Very nice. Very nice. How's the uh, how's the weekend when it came to inventory? Yeah, so um, last set, it's interesting. You know, I, like I said in the beginning of the show, I kind of wanted to stay a little bit away from it, but but I, you know, I love my little week over week. I love that analogies, too. Uh, analysis. So Bill says we're talking about Stonehenge Avenue. Got it. Stonehenge I, Avenue. Yeah. So I, I, I didn't. I don't think I added a road or avenue to it, but it's Stonehenge, so it's off of Sixth, Sixth Avenue. But that's a all, great location. There's also one off. Is it a great location? There's also one off of uh, Belmont Park. Right, so it kind of splits. It splits up a little. That's bit. That's a great park too. Yeah, so we're not near. So this particular one is not near Belmont Park. This is up over right, literally right from my office to there. Woody Fincham says, "Look me up, Keith, when you're ready to sell. We love the acres." Yeah. So it sounds like you got a potential buyer for your house right there. Why don't I say Woody Fincham? Called Mrs. Smith. I'm actually I was going <laughs> to say that Woody Fincham. I will mention this on air. Yona Smith. Here's a buyer for your house. <laughs> Here's a buyer for so it's a little warm out, isn't your it? house. Isn't it? Uh, is the AC off in here? Uh, no, the is AC's the AC on 60. It's on 16. Is the AC off in here? 69 could the AC, in here. Could the AC be a little off in here? It's on 69 over here. Is Smith sweating? I think Smith is sweating. <laughs> Chad Wood bit. is loving this. Somewhere yeah. Chad Wood is laughing. Uh -huh. um, Chad, Wood. Chad, you're starting trouble. Chad, I'm, <laughs> Chad out of the gates is starting trouble. Chad. Um, Chad, that was a hell of a grill. Uh, a, a lot of protein you had on the grill over the weekend, sir. I saw your Facebook post. Um, did you have a good weekend? I had a great weekend. Go. We had a great business weekend. A lot, lot, lot of uh, phone calls. You know, I think tempos are picking up. Uh, I snuck in a couple of 25-mile bike rides, which I'm excited about doing. How long uh, does 25 miles take? Um, so I think, hang on one second. I think it, I forgot to shut my hearing aids off. So the... Um, uh, about an hour and between an hour and thirty and hour forty five minutes. It depends. It's not bad. On, it depends on the ride and stuff like that. So I, I've been averaging somewhere around fifteen miles an hour, sixteen miles an hour. Uh, multiple people are saying make Keith sweat. It's working. I'm sweating. <laughs> um, that's a good. I workout. was going to title the second half of this show called "Stump the Chump," which would be me, but apparently uh, it's already started. <laughs> Well, that's the beautiful thing about the show, and 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 honestly, that's one of the, um, it's, you know, we talk about this all the time. When you live stream to as many people as we got watching the program, you always got to be on your p's and q's. And and something that's done on the internet, I try. I'm gonna. That's a lesson that I'm gonna teach our son. Um, I think it's a lesson for um, teenagers everywhere. Something that's put and published or 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 you know, sent to social media somewhere, literally never goes away. So you're just trying to teach a 60-year-old this. It's been taking a little bit it's, while. It's, it's forever. It is forever. This is the world's paper trail, is the internet. The paper trail of the world. Well, if you're going to hire somebody, what's the first thing you do? You vet them. You, you do vet a them Google online. search. Well, something. and on top of that, even if you're not going to hire something, if, if someone's going to do, if someone's going to publish something on there, there's going to be people who see it and send it to the people who they're, you know, they're talking about. Um, anyway, um, that's Less. just my, my lesson for the, uh, the teenagers out there um, in, in, in the world. Keith Smith has got a short week. He's heading to Connecticut tomorrow. Zero dark 30. Zero, Zero dark 30. Are you bringing the bike? Yep. Are you really bringing the bike? Yep. Uh -huh. On the pickup? So you're taking the pickup truck? Oh, we may also have a rack on the car. So. Oh, on Subaru? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So the uh, bike is coming to Connecticut? Oh, the, uh, that was part of the negotiations. Okay. I was going to, if I'm going to spend, uh, we're going to do a grandbaby babysitting and remote working for a week. Uh, I need to get a little bike riding in. You know, I'm, I'm uh, so as you know, the name of the bike is called Attic. Yeah. And there's a reason why I got it. So I'm kind of, I get addicted to this stuff on that end of it. Hey, so back on the real estate end of it, last seven days, um, 71 new homes is car footprint, which is what we do every week. Car footprint, 71 new units came on the market, 81 went pending, pretty close to par. You know, it's not too terribly lopsided, but, um, you know, looking pretty good. Um, we've been looking at price changes. That's 62, which is uh, same week in April. Uh, price change was 47. So, you know, we're about 20 units up. But interesting, same week in April, 127 homes came on the market versus 71 for this week. And then when pending was 100 versus 81. So the pace is, the, 
the pace for us is picking up a little bit. Our phone calls seems to be, you know, been picking up our texts or emails. But the market itself is starting to uh, balance a little bit, starting to slow down. It's starting to become a buyer's market, guys. But in interesting, uh, a year ago, same week, with 77 units came on, uh, 64 went into, went, into, went into pending. So that was lopsided, right, between that, that going active and pending. So we're getting a little bit on par, not quite on par, but close. Home inspections back? Uh, home inspections are back. Yeah, we just did Closing a, costs coming back? I haven't seen too many of them. No closing costs yet? No, not too many. We've had one, and it was like 50% or something like that. But I think that balance is starting, starting, starting to, come, to come back. Um, it's so interesting on just to kind of focus a little bit on souls. So the last week, 103 souls are those that are closed. Um, uh, back in April 78... Uh, back a year ago was 101. So a year ago to now, it's it's almost kind of balanced, which is weird. It was a year ago. It was 77 came on same week. This is 71. 101 sold. 103 this week. Um, la last, you know, the pending uh, was uh, a little off a week a week a week a year ago at 64 versus 80 81. So you know, I think the pace is kind of picking up a little bit. Um, the interesting thing, questions already come in. We'll get to them in a matter of moments, guys. Give the show a like and a share. If you want some perspective, some comments, or some jokes heard on air, just put them in the feed. We'll relay them on air. Debbie Robles, welcome to the program. She is watching in Short Pump. Um, Rochelle Wharton is watching in Crozet. Hello, and welcome to the program. And Kevin Olivia, hello, and welcome to the show, watching in Lynchburg. Um, a year ago today, rates were, were they 2x less on a 30 fix? Oh yeah, they were half. They were half. Yeah, rate. Right. What's a thirty fix now? Uh, probably we'll find out on on Wednesday when Scott Mar Marvelous Mor Mortgage comes in. He's but bringing Taylor Averett with him on Wednesday. Uh, Taylor good. Averett. Good. Thank you. I, I didn't. Thank you for sharing me. I didn't know that. Um, so you know, it's five twenty-five, five thirty. It depends on your credit, right? But it's somewhere around five and a half, just to pick a number. It's somewhere on that versus probably a year ago it was two and a half. Sub three for sure, right? On that on that end of it. So, but but again, the the units that have closed here and in, in in that these were these were stuff that kind of came on the market. I looked at it on the back of the the back of it that came on the market when the interest rates started climbing. So people are still buying and selling. Uh, but I was a bit surprised. I did not expect um, July the same week in July a year ago to be the same. And I asked Yona what she thought about that on the way in because, you know, we like to take one vehicle in. And she seems to feel that maybe the summer, the, you know, historically, we've got a 20-something year running spread. Summer slow. Yeah, historically. that I think, I think, you know, our conversations before, pardon me, I'm really interested to see what September 1 brings. September, September and October, that's going to be the litmus test of where we're really going to flush out at the end of 2022 versus uh, 2021. So um, rates, as we know, are up. Inventory is, is, is not moving as quickly. Um, one positive, Philip, I'll get to your comment here. One positive we're gas seeing, is below four bucks. gas is going down and inflation seems to potentially uh, have plateaued. Time will tell, uh, but there's some indicators out there um, that inflation is starting to plateau a bit. Um, you buy that or no? Well, time will tell, but I'll know this much. We, we, we called this quite some, at the end of last year. Inflation is going to impact the housing market but more than anything right? oh, no across, doubt. across the board, probably even more than, than interest rates. Interest rates will kind of balance themselves out a little bit, a little bit here. So, you know, I was, a matter of fact, um, I had to come in for a meeting yesterday, and I purposely went over to Costco to fill up because we were sub- uh, sub four, please don't ask me how much. I forgot how much, but I, all I got excited was below four bucks, and I filled my pickup truck up. Uh, it's so crazy, Judah. Four bucks. Let's get a, you got a three shot ready to go. Let's get Judah Judah Wickhauer's mug shot on here, um, and and have him wave to his adoring That's a gorgeous fans. Mug. You got a um, Isn't it crazy? We're championing and and singing the praises of sub Yay! a three dollar ninety nine cent gas, Judah. In yeah. July, in the in the middle of the you know the vacation season, yeah, right on that stuff. And I think what happened um, is I think um, probably you know April May of this year, everybody just did this go out and travel, 
And I think that might have been part of the spike as far as volume, you know, as far as, you know, the amount of fuel being used on that end of it. I don't know exactly why it's coming down. You probably know this more than I do. How much is a, a barrel of oil? Uh, WTI to? crude, Judah, look at that sponsor strip. WTI crude is roughly 100 bucks a barrel. Yeah. Um, I'd say it's around 100. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's as much um, demand from summer travel and sure. pent up, um, pent up, I got to get out after this pandemic feelings. And it's also the fact that it's a, it's a forward indicator. Um, a lot of folks now are starting to realizing that come Q3, Q4, because inflation is so rampant that people aren't going to travel as much, so gas is dropping. Yeah, it's a forward indicator. Except for the Smiths, which we're going to get. I mean, you guys travel constantly, yeah. um, <laughs> which is good. But you're retired. You should be traveling. Did uh, you say I'm retired? You're re you're close to retiring. Uh, I mean, no. you're you're uh, 60. We, yeah, we, we well, I don't think we're ever going to retire, but but we just adjust on how how much work we put in. We we uh, we work. Uh, let me see. Last week, uh, yeah, it was quite a bit. You know, so we, we work all the time. It's just we do all this this 12-hour days for five, six, seven days, actually probably seven days a week, and then we take a little time off and we do that because otherwise Keith becomes very boring. <laughs> Nicholas, Nicholas Herby says uh, his beautiful wife and, and, and Nick filled up Friday just because they were thrilled to see $3.99 gas at Costco. Nicholas Herby, my wife, did the same thing. She saw gas $3.99. Had a half a tank pulled over and just filled up because it was three dollars and ninety nine cents. She was just happy to see gas with a three in it. I mean, you think about that. That's where we're at now with inflation. That if you see gas with the three, you stop, you fill up, and you you do jumping jacks of joy. So does everything does, is a matter the, of scale? Yeah, right. Say that again. Everything is a matter of scale. Exactly right. <clears throat> we get used to one scale and it goes down, and it seems like a, a major breakthrough. But do you, Judah? Well said, Judah. Do you? Have you changed any of your buying habits in the last four to six months? Are you doing something more or a little bit less than you normally would do because of... I think I can answer that for him. I would say the answer is no. <laughs> Wouldn't you say the answer is no? I'd say the answer is mostly no. I mean, I mean I'm a little more frugal, but for the most part, I'm not out buying yeah. you know, hundreds of dollars of groceries or splurging on... you know. Anything. It could be one of the one of the things here. Um, being a, uh, a a single man, single and ready to mingle, has its advantages at peak inflation, um, at levels of inflation we've never seen in American history. It, cer it certainly helps, but I've always been frugal. So, it it, it it's very it's, it's good morning, more, Kevin Yancey. When you're an empty nest, though, it's a little easier, right? So we just go oh. out, we go out to eat a little bit less. We don't buy, you know, we don't go to Whole Foods as often as we probably would normally do because of of the cost on stuff, but I, I uh, it was my, uh, uh, this coming week is my parents' 60th wedding anniversary, and I had them over for dinner, and we went, I went to Costco to pick up a couple of steaks, because just needed to grill up some steak. Costco's got great steak. They got great steak. Um, I think I took out a small mortgage to buy them, but, you know, it, it, What kind of, what kind of cuts? Oh, yeah, I do New York strips. Okay. Right. So you got strips? That's what I... What, what, uh, what do strips set you back? What's a strip per pound at Costco these days? Uh, all I know was Bill McChenzie, you know that? Phil was, Dow? The package I got of five was 125 bucks. A five pack of strips is one. No, I'm sorry, I lied to you. It was six. It was six, it was 125 bucks. Are you sure? Oh yeah, but they were these were these were super thick. That's twenty plus dollars a steak. Yeah. Are yeah. you sure? I'm sure. Bill I mean, McKenzie, I, is that right? Phil Dowd, is that right? Chad Wood? Would you like me to take out the receipt out of my wallet? Well, I, I, you know, okay, so that puts it in perspective. So if you're going to Costco, and you know what Costco stands for, right? No. Do you know what Costco stands for, Judah? I know, I know what the original one is. I've been Does there. anyone know how, how they got the name Costco? Cost Cooperative. Oh, yeah. Costco is Cost Cooperative. They utilize purchasing power to, to save you money. Interestingly, the Costco business model is strictly on membership. They essentially, for, um, for their customers, they sell stuff at their cost and make the money on membership. It was membership. an interesting article about the hot dogs, right? So the hot dogs are always like $1.50, right? Yeah. Right? And I think there's some article around here that somebody wants to change it and everybody's got all worked up about it. So at a cost cooperative, the cost for six steaks is 21, it's called yeah, 21 but, bucks a steak. But these things were like... 
Huge. It but I guess what important. I'm saying is that puts it in perspective, the plight of the restaurant owner. If the yeah. restaurant owner is going, now the restaurant owner has different options besides Costco to buy. They have wholesale purveyors like Cisco and Performance Foods where they're buying their food from and they're also buying more in bulk. These or, things weighed so much I had to get somebody to help me put them in the thing. Well, I guess what I'm trying to say is like yeah. the, the, the restaurant owner has got to go, what, 2X? Yeah. One, you know, 2.5X? Their cost of goods, um, so that means that's why you're seeing steaks for 55 bucks on a menu. Yeah, I mean historically, you know, any business, right? If it costs you a dollar, you have to charge uh, three times the amount, right? The dollar for the product, you know, then there's a dollar for your overhead, and then the dollar for your gross profit, which ends up with taxes and insurances and and all that kind of great stuff. And if you're if you're lucky, you end up with a somewhere to five to five to ten percent net if you're lucky that's days. what we try to do is we try to 3x um we try to 3x when dealing with clients um i think it's a good peace of mind same um, thing with housing it's always just the same way a, a lot of comments coming in um the rotisserie chicken is where it's at that's from mr and that's Yance. also a loss leader too they actually i, I read an i don't article. think loss not loss leader loss leader means you're selling something for a loss to attract someone into I a think store. It, I think, Google it, I read an article, it's either that or the hot dogs, but one of them. A good example of a loss leader would be Sammy Snacks. Sammy Snacks used to sell um, Frontline or Advantix for, uh, at a loss. They would lose money on selling the flea and tick stuff to your dogs. But they did that because every time someone went in, went in for a discount on Advantix or Frontline, they came out with something else that was at full MSRP. Well, Google, Google let that rotisserie thing, because I don't think you can buy a chicken, an actual chicken uncooked at Costco, whole chicken uncooked for, uh, I, th I think the rotisserie is less than what you can buy, but I may be wrong on, on that end of it. But I'm, I remember reading an article about that, that that was their quote unquote loss leader, whatever. Whatever that is. Okay, okay. So comments coming in here. Um, first, let's, wow, there's a lot of comments here. Jennifer, we will get to you. Um, Jennifer says she loves um, the rotisserie chickens at Costco, and it's one of the reasons they go there. Um, and, and Carrie Rock says the chickens are at a loss, and they're placed at the back of the store for a reason. Thank you, Carrie Rock, for so saying that. So the question that. is, is, have you ever, you know, has anybody ever walked in, got a rotisserie chicken, and left? And left. Right? I know I've never done that. So. I've never done that. Yeah. Who goes into Costco and comes out with one item? I, I joke around every time I go out. Look at that. It's under 300 bucks. <laughs> right? Under three? Yeah. That. So that. that's the only tough part about Costco over there for me. I don't know about you guys is, is I often leave coming out with a full cart. And then I'm like, oh, my God, my bills. What you just said. Yeah. But, but then you stockpile and then you save the money in the back. Yeah. We, I tell you what. Yona and I... Don't go to Costco as often as we used to when the kids were well, home. Because you only have two people. Yeah, right. Just, you know, I don't need fifty thousand pounds of. You don't Cheerios. need a deep freezer full of protein. I, I do, I do not. And, and you we, like to eat out. We, we enjoy eating out, but we, we, we do at least us and that we do kind of more like the European kind of thing. We only buy food for a couple of days, you know, or, or let's say as our daughters say when they come over to visit us and open up the refrigerator that we're a bunch of college kids because there's there's alcohol, milk. Alcohol, eggs, eggs, there's eggs, alcohol, I think that's about it. And then we go out and buy a steak for dinner that night or, or chicken for that night and grill it up. Um, Nick says um, he likes to wander and check things out in the store. Nicholas Erpe, I do as well, my friend. Um, in fact, one of my favorite things about Cost Cooperative, a.k.a. Costco, is the free samples. I love to hit all the free sample stations in Costco. Do you uh, ever actually buy anything of the free Oh, no. <laughs> I never buy anything. It's lunch, isn't it? I go in there for, for lunch, yeah, yeah. Or, or for like a snack. It's lunch. Um, Kevin Yancey loves the chickens. Um, this is from, God, I love getting to know the same folks that are uh, interacting with the show. I, I, I feel like I get to know you. Um, Judah, we'll get you in the mix here if you have something to add. Andre Xavier, we'll get to you in a, in a matter of moments as well. Um, Stacy says this. Um, Costco feeds our family. This is where we do our grocery shopping, our gas fill up, and we do this on Sundays after church with the husband and the kids. It's turned into a family tradition. Yes, Jerry, the free samples give me all the feels. <laughs> and Danny O'Day, hello. So uh, our daughter and son-in-law live out in Seattle, so they go to the original Costco in, in Kirkland, 
Washington. And it's funny, every time we call them, literally, they're either going to Costco or they're coming back from Costco. I don't know what two young people get in Costco all the time, but, but that's what they do. They're in Costco all the time, back and forth, back and forth. Andre and Xavier watching the program. So grateful for your amazing show. Quick question on the new construction side. Is the issue with materials and labor still going on? Thank you um, for a great show. And Keith, you jump in here. I can say the, the custom home builder that we represent um, undoubtedly has um, labor issues and yeah. cost of good issues and supply chain issues. Um, cost of home, uh, new construction is higher than it's ever been and it's slowed down to the point where folks are saying, let's see what happens with inflation um, and see if it cools down. So um, d yes, 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 and more yes on that end, was, which was that? Andre was, Xavier. Uh, Andre, so uh, please- Cascadia's finest. Uh, please watch on Friday. I've got Greg Slater sitting in my seat here. Mr. New Construction. Mr. New Construction, and he's going to bring two other new construction guests along. Oh, who does he have in mind? Uh, we haven't quite, hasn't quite flushed out yet on that end of it, but he's supposed to let us know by Wednesday. Um, but these topics, this, I had a pre-show conversation with them yesterday. That exact topic is going to come in. So what we're going to do is put the experts in the room to go ahead and do this. You know, I've built enough houses, I think I can qualify as, a, as an expert. But it, it's 100% right that the new construction is dropping back. I believe there was a nationwide a 15% jump in contract cancellations, right? Now, that's over last year, right? And last year, there was like zero contract cancellations. But contract cancellations are picking up. Product types are starting to be a little bit questionable. We've been talking about this for a while. Um, what do you mean questionable? Well, in other words, the decision to build a high-end townhomes yeah. is stops being somewhat questionable at the moment because that decision was made because of the runway is so long was years ago. So, you know, a half a million dollar townhome is maybe not where the market is at the moment. I may be wrong. These guys will bring in data, but what I look at... Um, there seems to be a little bit of slowdown. So I'll be interested on Greg's read on that, that the, the entry-level townhomes are not seeing the contract um, cancellations, but maybe the upper-end townhomes are. Well, a perfect example is something we try to mention on this show with first-hand perspective. The neighborhood I live in in eastern Almaro County, Stanley Martin, is the predominant player with new construction, and their model now is homes that are in 27, 2,800 square feet. I mean, we, we are normally in the neighborhood, you were seeing 4,000, 5,000, 6,000 square foot homes. Now they're two to 3,000 square feet. And that's because the cost of goods are so expensive. So what's, uh, the, what's the price per square on new construction these days? Oh, yeah. Well, Off the top of your head, back I, of the napkin. I will tell you, um, if you ever want to watch a builder squirm in their chair. That question right there. Ask that question. Because people hold them to it. I, I, and I, I've made a career out of not answering that question. <laughs> well, now you don't have to. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think it is? is it I, you know, I don't really know. It's moving that fast. It's got to be over three. Is it over three? It's got, I mean, new, well. We got, I was thinking 250. We've got to quantify it. Are we talking? Um, Custom or production? That's exactly right. Yeah. Custom's definitively over three. Yeah, I was but, thinking product. We can't. Let's not use custom because custom it. is going to scare yeah. the hell out of people. Yeah, I would say somewhere in two fifty. Yeah, somewhere in that range. So two fifty price per square new construction. Let's say it's a three thousand square foot home. Two fifty times three thousand. The cost to build that home is seven hundred fifty thousand dollars, and the general contractor needs to make a fifteen percent. Is it fifteen percent profit that he tries to shoot? The reality is probably in the neighborhood of seven to eight percent, right? What's the GC at? The, so, the so, builder. So, so have you noticed I don't build houses any longer? Isn't it about set? I mean, they want if you, 15. If you, if, you can, um, if you can net 3 to 6%, that's good. Now? It's yeah. that? Yeah, I would say now. The costs are just going through the roof. I would never want to be in the custom home building right now. So 750, 750,000, let's call it 6%. Is an additional 45. And then, are you calculating the dirt net? No, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So just the house on a 3,000 new home. This is not a custom build. This is production. Well, I, so I can tell you, Album, I can tell you what the price is because I, I ran the first Please. six months of, of Albemarle County, uh, new construction only, single family detached. Median sales price is 718. Yeah, there you go. It was yeah. right there. Yeah, so it's 718, but that includes the dirt. Right. So you've got. And that's the median. That's the median. So you got to. Does that include attached? 
No, so attached is 472. Okay, detached is 718. Correct. Does it say it's median median, si medium size of the new construction? Yeah, I didn't put square footage okay. down on that. Okay, on that end of it. So I would bet you it's under three. Yeah. I, I Do you think 3,000? Oh yeah. 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 I specifically um, didn't put that in there. So these are the numbers we were running for the first half of the year that I've been keeping in my little handy notebook here. But um, 2022 versus 2021 is on par in volume. Single family detached, Albemarle County, 111 sold, closed so far on that. This is all production stuff. You don't see a lot of custom in, in the car MLS system in that end of it. Uh, there's some, but not, not a huge amount. Um, <clears throat> and then last year was 110, so that's pretty much par. The big jump was 646 last year was the median sales price, 718 is now. So let's call the production end of it on par. Why, why I'm really interested to hear what Greg talks about the... Uh, I love Greg Slater. About the new construction stats. The single family attached, in other words, the townhomes. Now, I have to quantify this a little bit. In CAR, in the, in the MLS, they don't break out townhomes from duplexes. Two very different animals. They put them all together as attached on that end of it. So two very different animals. They're two very yeah. different animals because if you have a duplex and you're on one side, it's kind of like a detached. It's, uh, it's not, but it's close enough to it that you got a little bit of yard. Where a townhome, if you have a middle unit, you may not have anything on that end of it. But it was a 54% drop year over year. 62 units were sold the first half of the year at 472. Um, 2021 was 94 at 400 median sales price on that end of it. So um, that's even less than 2018 on that end of it. So that was a 54% drop in um, attached. And, and that's probably, and, and again, Greg will bring into it, my suspicion is is that's interest rates going from sub three oh, yeah. to sub six. Definitely. It just, it just becomes too expensive. Too expensive. Mark Lickman, welcome to the program. I think hey, he's Mark. watching in Mexico right now. Um, Fluvanna County's, uh, one of Fluvanna County's finest, who is a world traveler, Mark Lickman. Paul McCarter of Avenue, he's an agent. He says, a builder once told me price per square foot is equal to buying a car by the pound. Yeah. yeah. See, this is what I don't, okay, like, I'm a numbers guy. So it depends on what you want to have in the house. See, that's, that's uh, it. You could go ahead and have, uh, uh, let's say production. We have a, you know, Stanley Martin has a, a, a base unit on that end of it. But I want to walk in there and I want, I pick their highest package. Call it just call it the platinum package. Whatever you want to call it, yeah. right? You know, I'm putting gold fixtures in. Yeah. What, whatever it is. Well, that screws up your... You want the uh, Viking appliances. You want all the, all the bells and... You want the technology home. Whatever it is, yeah. I, my selection for that home takes that home from a dollar to two dollars, right? Uh, same thing with custom. You know, at any time, you know, all the homes that we, we did everything from full custom to semi-custom. We were not a production uh, person. And to go back, uh, company, to go back to 20 years ago, as I was thinking on the way in here, you know, my opening apology to you, uh, when I was your age, I had five companies. We were doing dozens and dozens and dozens of homes a year. On that, on that end of it, and that was the one question I absolutely hated the most. I said, when you finish telling me what you want in the house, then I'll tell you what the cost is, and then we can figure out the math on the price per square foot. But if you want to walk in and say, hey, I need to know, it's just, it's just almost impossible to do it. Well, as well a let, 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 excuse me, let me do, try it this way. Um, do you remember a Pinto? You remember the Pinto? Yeah, we know the Pinto. Right? Yeah. yeah. So, so I can go in and buy a Pinto or I can buy a, a Cadillac Coupe de Ville. Well, Paul makes the comparison. Mercedes and Kia are the there same, but the price isn't close. There you go. They're, yeah. both, they're both cars. Yeah. They both have four wheels. They both get you from point A to point B. I'll play the devil's advocate here. As a business person who makes his decisions based on rationale, common sense, um, and data, um, how else should someone build a, do a home with a, uh, a custom builder without price, price per square foot? It's like someone comes to me here, and, and we get, um, you know, folks know that I own most of this building here. And they're, they come to me and like, this thing is for sale. And I'm like, what's the cap rate? You know how many people get pissed off when I ask the question, what's the cap rate? 
So, so you're you're mixing apples and we're still doing fruit, but you're doing apples and pears. Commercial is a whole different world. I guess my point is, you need what what threat? What's the KPI you're going to utilize to justify? Because you're not just going to say yes to one uh, builder. You're going to compare builders before you start a project. You're going to price uh, them out. So that's interesting, um, dude. People who are watching this program do not say yes to one builder. Well, let's, Shop let's, it around. So, so let's. But it's changed a lot. Twenty years ago, that was a different environment. Right now, the builder. You don't. Sometimes you don't get to choose the builder. You choose the where. Right. I'm. I'm picking whatever subdivision, and this is the builder that's in that subdivision. I don't get to come in and say, I want ABC. Customs uh, are very, No, no, oh, no, no, no. That's, that, that used to be the case back before, because what happens is- If you buy a lot in a neighborhood, you can find the builder you want. Really? You're telling me that if you go to Glenmore and there's a lot for sale that you can't bring your own builder? No, Glenmore is a, Glenmore, it, the new section that is opened up that Stanley Martin does, it's a Stanley Martin section. There's a lot on Piper Way. But that's, if, so that's a custom, that's a custom home. So that's yeah. two different, we're talking two different animals. Sure. Right we're very different than Stanley Martin buying up an area than selling lots to people. So we have production, we have custom. Yeah. Right. So I just don't want to confuse folks here. So on the production side of it, you're spot on, right? Let's go pick the lot. Then you got to figure out who you want to be, and you better interview multiple builders yeah. before you do that. Right, because you're going to spend a year of your life with so these people. So I did that for 600 homes, and generally, what it came down to is who you felt comfortable with. Yeah, that's really what it came down to. Sure, where where the relationship mattered at the end of it, you know, where you were comfortable with it. Because at the end of the day, a house is a house. Right? It's who do you feel comfortable with? Who do you trust? Who do you are going to help you navigate that? You know, if you go ahead and Google one of the most stressful things in, in life, there's the death of a loved one, but building a house is in there. One of the top five of the stressful most things that you can do in your, in your life. On the end. I saw my parents build a house in Williamsburg, Virginia, when my brother and I were custom, kids. Right? Custom house yeah. mm -hmm. in Kings Mill in Williamsburg. Mm -hmm. um, who matters? Dude, it was freaking brutal. Yeah, who matters? It's, my dad spent a year of his life. Yeah, who matters? So it's, it's really no different than what we do every day to help Jerry and Judah to buy a home. Who matters? It's setting expectations, making sure everybody understands what they're getting, what they're not getting, have the systems in place to go ahead and, and do it. But you know, it's, uh, you know, that's on the custom side of the house. The production side of the house is a little bit different, right? It's generally, um, you know, if you were to go into um, a subdivision and some, what happens is, particularly the size of it, right? Builder A would take so many lots, builder B would take so many lots. That's a common place right now. So if you want the lot now, what can happen in some subdivisions um, is builders start trading lots. They'll say, okay, look, I'll trade lots from point A to point B, but if I come in and buy the land, develop it, and build it, you're building with me. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes absolute sense. Um, comments coming in. Kevin does not believe the margin is um, three to seven percent. Google it, National Association of- For the custom home builder. For the custom home builder. He says we're nuts if we think it's three to seven percent. It, it's about three to six percent. Kevin, just out of curiosity, I responded back to him. What do you think the margin is? Just curious. Do you think it's That's higher net. or lower? I'm talking net, net. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah, you're talking net. Yeah. Go, yeah. go, ahead, go ahead. Net profit. Net profit. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah go ahead. Uh, the reason I know that is- But well, you used to be one. I used to be one. Yeah. And, and sometimes when I do custom bills and you take a look at the closing statement and the builder goes, you just made more money than I did- on it, then I've heard that from a lot of builders. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's why you're seeing a lot of builders diversify into remodeling. Oh, well, where the margin is what? The, now that's thirty percent. That's a whole different margin. That net is much higher. He knows about this. Educate us. Mu much higher. The risk is significant. Is is is, is commensurate? That is that the right word? Commensurate. Commensurate. Did I say commensurate? That right? Huh? Commence. Yeah, that word. Surit. Like Thor. Tor. Thor, right? <laughs> yeah. So uh, there's an inside joke. My wife wanted to go see that movie, and she goes, let's go see Thor. And I go, what the hell are you talking about in this Thor? Anyway, so uh, the risk is huge. Tell them why. You know. Seriously, you should tell this is This is good knowledge. Yeah. Because so, you don't know what's behind the wall. Well, you've got all that <laughs> yeah. to deal with. But if I'm building a, a home on my lot... <clears throat> 
and we have a relationship problem, it's my lot. I'm building, I'm renovating in your house. You don't know what's behind the wall. Um, I get pe we, because of what my background and because of my class A licenses and all that kind of great stuff, I get asked all the time, so what do you think this renovation is? If I'm going to buy this house and renovate it, what do you think it's going to cost? My first question is, is what's the number you have in your head? It's always two times the cost. And whatever that number is, <laughs> double it. it and, and they look at me and they wonder, he says, I, I don't need to give you a number. Whatever number you're thinking, double it. And actually, I would triple it right now. That's terrifying. I would triple it. Because of cost of goods and labor? It's cost of goods. As you said, you know, I open up a wall and go, oops, that wasn't there because the renovation contract is going to say, that's not my problem. Now you've got to pay for that. Here's the extra. And think about how much leverage the uh, remodeler has when they the open house up is a wall. Torn apart. Yeah, right. Right. Finish your thought there. Because the house is torn apart, you're not going to go to the remodeler and be like, I'm not paying more because of this surprise but behind the wall. Your house is a construction so, zone. So let's put it to what you do for a living. Sure. Right? right? You help folks, but you build websites. You built a beautiful website, a couple of, several actually, beautiful websites for us. But Real Talk with Keith Smith. We built Real Talk with Keith Smith, Yes Realty Partners, and the Keller Williams um, overall parent company website all originated in this shop. That's one aspect of what we do here. But if I show up with the with the website and say I need you to fix this, it's more expensive to remodel or revamp an existing website than for me to start from scratch. And it's no different in the house. Yeah, because I'm not. We're not going to spend the time to try to decipher somebody else's back end code as opposed to just using our code from scratch that we know works. Get a big old eraser, erase it yep. all the things, start with a clean piece of paper, and start all over. Yancey thinks it's double digits. Jennifer thinks it's double digits. What's double Stacey digits? Stacey watching thinks it's 10% plus. What's that? The GC. For the custom home? Yeah. It's not. Yeah. Google it. Yeah, he, he's, he's right, guys. He's right. Um, how about this question from Stacey? It's a, it's a misconception. People think that. That's what it is. But, but it is not. To, and just think about the risk. That they particularly, you know, look, I'm, I'm sitting here. I can tell the story. I lost because of risk. I lost 17 million dollars. Lost everything we had. Well, talk to him. Even, even a uh, uh, very, very. I mean, that was a very real circumstance. During the pandemic, the cost of goods were so going up so fast. The GCs didn't have escalators associated with cost of goods in the pandemic and the contracts, and a lot of them were losing their shirt. I literally were getting phone calls from builders saying, what do I do, what do I do? Because this is not an unusual thing. This happened to us in the late 2000s, or excuse me, the early 2000s, when drywall and all this stuff, this, this cyclical cost is pretty normal. It happens, right? We couldn't get labor. Those five companies I was talking about? Um, drywall? No, I owned a framing company. Did you have a drywall company? I did not. I Electrician? Owned. Can you let me finish? Okay, framing, framing, go. <laughs> framing, yeah. plumber, okay. cabinetry, okay. general contracting, okay. and a development company. Okay. And I started the plumbing, um, cabinet, and the framing because we couldn't find people. I just decided to create my own company. That's literally what we're going through now with, with our client. Yeah. Literally what yeah. we're going through. That's what I did. Now, I got lucky uh, somewhere in 2000. And I will, this is for the record, I would rather be lucky than good any day of the week. But I got lucky back before 2007, I sold off three of those companies um, and did very well. The other two I didn't, didn't do so well on that end of it, uh, on it. You know, the development company is the hugest risk on it. Um, which was, you know, we had three subdivisions going. Quinn Beckham, welcome to the program. Hey, we Quinn. love you, QB. Um, very interesting discussion right here because it continues in the feed the misconception that the builders make in bank. No, even the production guys are not. How about this question from Stacy? With their model, they're building in a salary for them for each house. So you guys are talking what's left over. So the GC is making the salary so they build net. in. So we're yeah. talking. So let's define net and gross and cost of goods and. And all that kind of grace. This is this is net. This is what's left over in their pocket uh, after all their expenses. Are As one, she's basically saying one of their expenses is the salary they pay themselves for each yeah, job. Yeah, plus their their regular employees, their you know their office folks, their subcontractors. So to Stacy's point, she's saying the builder is making the three to seven percent you're talking about plus the salary that they're paying. Plus, but they take all the risk. Yeah, Stacy, you're right. She, she's she's right. right. 
Yeah. So each house, the GC is saying, for my time, I'm paid this. Sure. But that's like any business. Sure. For my time when I'm running this sure. business, I'm paying myself every two weeks a check, and then at the end of the year, you hope there's some money left over, and then that's called profit. That's, that's kind of how it works. That's how, that's that's how, how it works. That's kind of how it works. Right, right. So the GC is going to pay themselves something. And that's, and that's sharp. Most people don't do that, by the way. Most smaller builders don't do they that. They just hope for the profit at the end. They, they don't pay themselves. Yeah. They don't set up the corporate structure in the front of it and pay themselves um, a salary, don't pay themselves a W-9, W-2, excuse me, W-2 on that end of it. What do you think that is? I don't, you know, I, it's interesting you, sh you should do that. Um, I used to, pre-pandemic, teach a class at PBCC uh, and JMU and, and, and UVA. It's one of these little $300, you get a credit. And the name of it was, was you know, helping folks start their own business, right? Um, and a lot of it was contractors that would come in. You know, they're, they're so wrapped up in, in um, focusing on, which is good, the work. They don't focus on the business end of it, on the end of it. And one of the questions I used to ask all the time, so, you know, you want to move from, like, you and a truck and grow your business to hire employees. And to a company. To a company. Yeah, right. That, You're talking from, like, that's exactly small it. business to a company. Well, yeah. these are folks doing as a DBA. They were not even having. They don't even have a company. Wait, structure. sole proprietor? They, yeah, exactly. They're right. building homes as sole proprietor. No, no, these were like um, plumbers and electricians. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Subcontractors, but they're still doing volume of work on that stuff. A lot of risk there. And so my first question always was to them: um, So what's your? You know, you, you've decided to do this and grow. What's your first two hires? And everybody was: I need a new electrician. I need a new plumber. I need a new laborer. I need a new this. And I went, no, it's a it's a CPA and an attorney. Right, set yourself up right, do all that stuff. And oh, by the way, that three to six percent, right? Assume, right? Guess how much the government gets of that? Exactly. It's a conversation we have here often, right, J Dubs? Of how the government takes a, a good chunk of what. Well, it depends how you're structured, right? So you pass it through you personally, like an S corp or something along those lines. Uh, you know. Well, how about this comment? Um, the the builder is making money on the the parts. Um, and goods that they're buying off you. So the builder buys something at X and they sell it for Y. They charge Y. Sure. Mm -hmm. Sure. Right. So the common is that's additional revenue built into the but model. That, but that, that's part of the net margin. That's part of the net yeah, margin. Right. That's, that's what we're trying to explain. That's, that, that's, that's, that's how, how they make money. Well, that's how this works, right? So it's interesting. I had a conversation with uh, one of our agents. I'll leave the name out in the office and he, he wants to renovate his bathroom. So it was like... Um, he or she, let's do it that way. Uh, so I said, look, I want to do this, da, 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 da. but the contractor that uh, I'm going to use says, look, I can go to Ferguson and buy all the fixtures and stuff like that, and I'll save myself a 30% markup. And then guess what? When he did that, he realized it was more expensive than when the builder could do it himself. No, I said, I said, I'll tell you what, you go back to your renovator and you say, are you buying at wholesale? And if you're buying at wholesale, and what are you paying for, and what is your markup? And he did that. And then he went to Ferguson and bought retail, and the retail was higher than the original right. number. Yeah. So, you know, but and why is that? Because, because Ferguson has rent and overhead, yeah, well, has storefront. No, well, they, they have two different paths, right? If you were a professional, a contractor, and you open up an account with them, and oh, by the way, it's like open up, it's like open up a loan, it's a credit line, you're personally responsible for it, yada, yada, yada. Uh, you don't pay me. I still got to pay them on that on that end of it on time. Uh, yeah, so it's um, it's uh, on on uh, you ask some of your uh, custom folks. You know, if you can get to ten percent, you're doing great. And you got to give that percentage of that to the government. Right, right. And how about and, and, and let's not underestimate. But the, the risk is huge. Yeah, let's, that's what I was going to say. Let's not in, underestimate the risk that's risk involved. Is huge. And let's not underestimate the experience involved and the connections involved. So I got this phone call, um, I think I mean, it was at the end of last I week. Lost, I mean, we lost, seven, we lost everything we had. Everything we had. This guy speaking from firsthand experience. I want anybody that's watching this program to know that. Speaking from firsthand experience. Yeah. I had this phone call. At the end of last week, um, we're you know we're uh, having some success selling these businesses, yeah. mm -hmm. and then there was a, someone that uh, mentioned to us, um, well, and you can tell that they were like kicking the tires, and you can t the question started being like, who do you use for this, and who do you use for that, who do you use for this, and 
who's so they this guy? To do it on their own. Yeah. yeah. And then about five or ten minutes into the phone call, you, you're doing this for 15 years, you start to see the red flags. Sure. And then they're basically asking for like the database of contacts to, to go from point A to point B. Sure. That database of contacts is the value proposition someone brings to their client. Because over 15 years, Keith's been doing this for 37, we have vetted the contacts that will deliver and who will not. That's part of our value proposition of what we're providing you. So this, this, let's just go back. You agree? To, yeah, absolutely. Well, it's, it's the, um, there was a saying, and I can't remember how it exactly goes, but what you're paying for is my experience. Exactly. And knowledge yeah. Is, is what you're paying for. Right. There's a, there's a whole, um, and, and Judah may jump in, I believe there's like some sort of proverb on that. I just can't remember how it actually, actually goes on that end, end of it. But let's sit, assume I build something for you, and I'm building it with a 10% net. That's my goal, that's my budget, that's my stuff. And let's forget about accelerator clauses and all that stuff. My employees screw up something. That's a $20,000 mistake. I eat that. You eat that. Right, there goes my 10% or whatever the number, the number is on that end of it. So you take all the risk on that end of it. Uh, you know, I get asked all the time, I mean, to be totally frank with you, to, to build homes and I go, nah. I'm good. I, re I relayed this on the I Love Seville show, and, and I'll pass it on to you. It was me, you, Judah, and Alex Erpe. This is called the conversation on perceived value. Oh, yeah, sure. Conversation on perceived value. A customer asked a contractor friend of mine how much it would cost to do the project. My friend gave him a proposal of $4,500. Mm -hmm. The customer responded to my friend, that seems really, 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 really high. My buddy said, what do you think is a reasonable price for this job? The customer said, 2,500 max. You're overcharging me 2,000 bucks. My homie, my buddy said, okay, then I invite you to do the job yourself. Guess what the customer said? I don't know how to do it. My buddy said, all right, then how about for 2,500, I'll teach you how to do it. So besides savings the $2,000, besides saving 2K, you're, gonna learn. you're also gonna learn a valuable skill there you go. that could benefit you for the rest of the life. No. The customer said, okay, sounds good, let's do it. My friend responded by saying this, great. To get started, you're going to need some tools. You will need a chop saw, table <laughs> saw, cordless <laughs> drill, bit set, uh, router, skill, skill saw, jigsaw, tool belt, hammer, etc." The customer said, I don't have any of those tools. Well, then go buy them and show my, them. My homie said this, Keith, I will, for an additional 300 bucks, let you borrow my tools and show you how to use them. So you're now at 2,800 bucks. The customer, it's a little tight, said, okay, I'll pay the extra 300 bucks to learn this. The guy, my buddy goes, all right, the project is gonna start on Monday. The customer said, I work Monday through Friday. I'm only available on the weekend. <laughs> my buddy said, if you want to learn from me, then you will need to work when I work. This project will take three days, so you will need to take three days off from work. The customer said to my buddy, That's that means I'm you. going to have to, have to <laughs> sacrifice three days of pay and use my vacation time. Yeah. My friend said, that's true. Remember, when you do a job yourself, you need to account for I've, unproductive factors. I've heard multiple versions of this over the years. The customer said, what do you mean by that? Yeah. My buddy said doing a job completely from start to finish includes time spent to plan yeah. the project, pick up materials, travel time, gas, setup time, cleanup time, waste disposal, amongst others. That's all in addition to the project itself. And speaking of materials, that's when we start on Monday, so I need you to arrive at the lumber yard at 5.30 in the morning. Oh, by the way, and prepay for everything. Yeah. Because you don't have an account. Exactly. So prepay for everything. You've got to prepay for everything. For an account, go out to pick it up, and oh, by the way, you're short a two by four, and you've got to stop what you're doing and run all the way out there and go ahead and get it because the two by four that you picked up was too warped, couldn't use it, whatever. But you can you can relate that story to this website to anything built, that you built for us, right? Yeah. Right? Oh, well, I think I can do this myself. Really, I don't think so. There's a reason why professionals do what they do. It's the reason why um, you know. Let's bring it back to what. Real estate, right? What we do to help people go into, you know, yes, people can buy and sell homes on their own, but what they're paying for is our expertise, right? Our, our ability to navigate uh, through the minefields of buying and selling right now. 
and and I'm and I'm really seeing this. We're, we're, we we I've been talking about this for a couple of weeks, and I just don't know exactly. I can't put my finger on it why, but our we're, our tempo is picking up, and I think a lot of it is you're established. Well, you're experienced. Well, it, it could be, but I think a lot a lot of it is okay. You know, maybe this thing I'm holding in my hand, this iPhone I'm holding in my hand, really can't do all the things that I was told it could do, right? And I really need to know how to navigate, navigate, navigate this. Uh, I mean, I was on the phone with Greg Slater on the way. We sold one of our, uh, we got one more remaining affordable housing unit over at Spring Hill Village that Stanley Martin Homes is helping us with and the land trust and all this stuff. And, and we were on the phone with two attorneys a loan officer helping them navigate how we can structure this to get this to the closing this unit we just put on the contract on it on it uh, and here we are two guys two real estate guys trying to teach two lawyers how to do this and educate a loan officer through the through the process we're doing this because it's our volunteer time and all that stuff but that's what you pay for that's the service that we bring to the to the table um, let's welcome um Crozet to the program. We'll welcome friends in Arlington, who I see on the heat map right now. And I see some people here in Richmond. Questions, comments, put them in the feed. Um, still, folks are not um, believing us well, that the somebody, margin is 3 to 7%. Somebody Google it? I mean, I, I, you know, I, I... Well, look, if God bless them if they can do more than that, but that's, the, that's historically the average. How about this question? This is an interesting one from Steven. How does the margin for a custom home builder compare to the margin of someone who's doing development and custom home building? Yeah, so I only can speak from my personal experience. Uh, my margin on the development side of the house. M was, Mike Algieri says you're doing a great job. Oh, uh, hey, Mike. I saw Mike the other day. His office and our office is in the same place. I didn't know that. Hey, Mike, how's it going, man? Um, a uh, little bit of a baseball rock star. Too. Oh my God, his his kids are baseball rock stars. Yeah, uh, family is unbelievable too. Um, look, the I used the the the. So I only can speak from my personal experience, right? The re, the the percentage of net I would make on the development was always considerably higher than the build side. So what what we did because. I hired a really good lawyer. I hired a, in 1987 a really good CPA, and I said, "This is what I want to do," and they set everything up so the development company would develop and it would sell the lot to the building company. Then the building company would build, so and then the building company would sell the house and lot package out. That's generally how that process works on that end. At least for us, it did. But yeah, the 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 profit on that was was huge, but I also lost. Seventeen million dollars. Uh, how about this question? Because the risk is unbelievably high. Christoph, what would you have done differently then, Keith? Back in the day, nothing really. Uh, none of that was my fault. None of that was. It is what it was. What it is what it was. You know, well, I I would not have done anything different. Really, um, I think I I think in the minutiae of it, um, I, I tell you what, let, 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 we're, we're we started off opening my heart in the beginning of it. I'll, I'll continue to open my heart to that. The only mistake I made, because this was a two-year snowball, right? It started in 2008, ended in 2010. And I would not wish anybody, my worst enemy, not that I have any, but I wouldn't wish this on anybody to go through that. It was brutal. I mean, people were showing up with warrants and debts to my kids at school. It was, it was absolutely brutal for two years to go ahead and do that. The fact that my wife hung around with me is, is just off the charts, thankful every minute of the day. Love you, Yona. But I thought I could fix it. How so? I just thought I could do it. I thought I could fix it, right? In the beginning of it, I can fix this. The second thing was I listened to the banks, which I should not have done, right? And it was like, well, you keep on paying your $86,000 every two weeks. Keep on paying your $86,000 every two weeks. Keep on, we'll get this right. Well, once you ran out of cash, they said, nah, we're done. So, but I thought I could fix it. And, and the counsel that I give to people that are in a similar situation is you can't fix this. You can't fix it. So let's go hire the experts to go ahead and help us, help you kind of get to it. But I really thought that I could fix it. And who am I to fix what happened? I mean, you, fix, you, you solve problems. I mean, it's one of your skills. Well, we're problem solvers. Yeah. But sometimes there's some 
problems sure. you can't solve that you have to, no, I just, I honestly believe. But to your credit, your track record of fixing things was fantastic. And one of the things that makes us successful as entrepreneurs is the confidence we have in ourselves. I do, and, and the people around us. Yeah, and the, so I mean, I would, have, I would have gone down the same road. I know that, but it, it, the question was, is what would I have done different? In hindsight, in you're hindsight, saying, in hindsight, I understand. 2020, uh, 20, what is it, 2020? Hindsight is 2020 vision, yeah. right? I would have, I would have pulled certain triggers in the very beginning, uh, very quickly, um, but I actually thought I could fix it, and I believed people. That was the second problem. I believed the banks probably shouldn't have done and that. And what were they, what, what line were they peddling? Well, they were peddling, we're going we're gonna to work together, we're going to get through this together, we're going to get this together, okay, no problem. And they had and no interest in doing that? Once the cash was gone. Once literally many, 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 many millions of dollars of cash was gone, then it was like, yeah, we're done. So, but anyway, you learn and live and you move on. I'll never make that mistake again and, and you move on. But that's, that's what I would have, that's what I would have, uh, I would have done. Well, my phone is blowing up. Oh, uh, dude, you should see the feed. The feed's blowing up right now. Uh, one of the things that you got to love and respect about Keith is the vulnerability he shows on this show all the time. And it's one of the aspects you'll get if you work with Yes Realty Partners and the Smiths. If it's you called get, honesty. Yeah. So you get you get folks that have been through the ringer, trials and tribulations, and folks that have the benefit of experience. Yeah, so you know it's it's interesting. You know, where you're at the mid part of your life, I'm really on the downhill side of it. You know, I've, if I'm lucky, I, I got another twenty years before God forbid something happens. Well, how old's Pop? Eighty three. So you got more than twenty years. Yeah, but but Pop's not working, right? You know, it's 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 um, you know. I've, I'm on the I'm over the hump, right? Okay. And, and that becomes a reality. That really sinks in when you start when you got a sick somewhere, and it, it just sinks in on it. So how my, so? A lot less risk taken. Oh God! No risk taken whatsoever. No, 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 no. To be honest, you take takes, any risk anymore? Yeah, very yeah. much so. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm on a bike. Well, besides bicycle riding on Route 53, sure I do, sure I which do. is the definition of risky. I'm sure, sure you've heard that from Yona. Huh? Bicycle riding on Route 53. I can't, is, I'm it, sorry. I didn't hear what you is said. Is there a shoulder on Route 53? Yeah, so those Mets are great, man. Okay. Right, Mike? Mets are doing great, okay. man. I think they're in first place, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> uh, and did you turn the AC down? I, it's on 69. Yeah, okay. So it's a, that's a... Judah's wearing a sweater. Yeah, that's no, a... Uh, well, you have an undershirt on your long sleeve shirt. Yeah, that's a... Uh, um, uh, Mel Brooks skit. Anyway, but the uh, <clears throat> what was I? You lost. You lost me. You got me off track here. Oh, yeah. So you know, I, I, I it takes me so much longer to make a decision than I ever. You know that you experienced that with me, right? Twenty years ago, it's like fractions of a second. At twenty years later, it takes. You know, it took the bike I bought took me six months to decide which bike to buy. Did you try other bikes? I, it was, was insane. It was stupid. Are you able to test drive bikes? Yeah, sure. You are? Yeah, sure. Like the new ones, or they have a testing model? No, no, no. The one you're actually going to buy. Wow. Yeah. yeah. You, you go ahead. You bring your, you bring your sexy uh, bike shorts, right? And uh, your shoes, if you got clip-ons, and they put on the pedals on there for you. And you is it try it, it out in the parking lot, or is it take it home and enjoy it for a weekend? Oh, no, no, no. It's, it's, I would take it out on like a four or five mile ride and see how it felt. And then come back. Then bring it back, yeah. Gotcha. I didn't know that's how it worked. Mm -hmm. Well, it does a blue wheel anyway. So that's how that works. So, so decision making is a little more um, cautious. Yeah, it's not, but, but, I, but it's, it's not a fear, right? So fear, uh, it, it's amazing how fear will, will, will kind of stymie folks and stuff like that. But uh, no, it's just a, it just takes a little bit longer to make a decision. Also, it takes me longer to get out of the bed in the morning, too. So, you know, there's all that. You're doing just fine, my friend. <laughs> oh, no, I got to tell you, it, it, uh, it, uh, it's like I look over at you and I go, oh, man, I got to put my feet on the ground. She goes, yeah, me too. Lauren says, I love the rotisserie chicken at Costco. There you go, Lauren. <laughs> it's a loss leader. Right? I, actually, I, I Googled it. It is a loss leader. Yeah. Um, you're right. For so example, did anybody Google the three to six, the, the, the net profit? I'm just curious. I mean, I, I'm, I know you're right. Yeah. yeah. That, that I know for, for certain you're right. I was not sure about the Costco rotisserie chicken uh, loss leader, but you're right. But I believe uh, the hot dog is also at $1.50. The four ninety nine price tag, this is an article from yeah, a couple years ago. Yeah, you can't even ago. buy a freaking 
chicken for four ninety nine. And the article says the four ninety nine price Uncooked. tag has held firm for the cup, one of the company's most popular items. Um, and this article says Costco loses an estimated thirty to forty a million a year by keeping rotisserie chickens at four dollars and ninety nine cents. But the company would rather keep members happy and foot traffic high. That is the definition of a loss leader. Yeah, and, but they also the membership is a huge part of their revenue stream, right? If not. Right? Isn't the membership fee? The membership is how they make their money. Yeah. Yeah. How, how much do you get like a check back once a year from them? From Costco? Yeah. A check? Yeah. For what, what? What program don't you? I, I get I get money. I get a, like if you spend so much money, you get That's like a, a question. Check. Mrs. Miller, are we getting money back from Costco? Because I'm not seeing that. Yeah. You spend a lot of money over there, sweetheart. Yeah. So are we, we getting a check from Costco? I'd love to know that answer, Mrs. Yeah, Miller. Yeah, we get a check once a year back up from it and I send it to the kids. Oh, Mrs. Miller, are we getting a check back from Costco, Mrs. Miller? I don't know about that. I haven't seen any checks from Costco. We spent a lot of money over there. Maybe Mrs. Miller is seeing it. <laughs> Mrs. <laughs> Miller, do we get a check from Costco? We get I'm going to be making a phone get, call here. We get a check back once a year. You have, if you spend, but you have to have, I'm, I'm, assume, I'm assuming you've got the business oh, yeah. card. Yeah. yeah, membership. Yeah. So, so, yeah, you you. I get so maybe much. We're not, maybe we're not, is it because you're spending so much money there? But it's just you and Yona. Yeah, but so we, spend, we, we spend enough money. We get it. We, we, the, we used to when the kids were around. Yeah, that's different. We used to make enough money. So you're probably to, to justify it. No, to pay the membership. It would just kind of be a wash on that end of it. But yeah, uh, we, our, they're not huge. It's like 50 bucks, 100 bucks, something like that. But we send, them, we send it off to the kids, and the kids over in Seattle go to Costco and buy whatever they're buying with it. That's what we do. Yeah, uh, one of the Seattle daughter has got a uh, baby on the way. Yeah, she's flying in actually. Do visit. Do early next year? Uh, January. It's just they upped it. It's January fourth now. Uh, January fourth. So New Year's Eve in Seattle for the Smiths. We are going to be in Seattle on New Year's Eve, right? Um, I think the game plan is is Smith to Smith is going a week before. Oh, okay. We we haven't quite negotiated. Well, oh, you got time. Well. Again, back to this I don't whole think you're going to be bringing the bike to Seattle. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I may or may not have bought a case for it. Uh, Mrs. Smith does not know that yet, by the way. They have cases for bikes? Yeah, sure. Is it to get them on the airplane? Sure. Really? Yeah. Uh, does the case have wheels? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, it does? It's okay. a hard case. So you just push it through the uh, airplane? Yeah, I had sure. no idea. Yeah, sure. Okay, that yeah, makes well, sense. People that do this get a little fanatical. The case for the bike has got to be pretty expensive, right? A little bit. Was it like 500 bucks? A little bit. Yeah. And it literally trouble. is like a suitcase. If you're not watching, because I'm going to get into trouble. I don't, I don't know if she's watching. Yeah. I have not. Yona, are you watching? I have yeah. not seen her interact with the feed yet. So do you, it's a suitcase for a bicycle? Yeah, just Google it. it yeah. You, what you do is you take off the front wheel, and the, the, both wheels, and the wheels mount on it. It folds up. Uh, just it's like something. like a big old suitcase. and you. Oh, yeah, it. dude. I have yeah. Some, good Lord, these are expensive. Yeah, thanks, pal. Good <laughs> Lord, you have this? I may or may not have that. Oh my goodness! But that looks very. So is is Mike's long? Because I want to talk about the Mets. Because I'm getting into trouble. Here. It looks very manageable though to carry it. It really breaks yeah. it down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and depending on which airline, like Delta, doesn't charge extra for it. This is a. It's not a carry on. No, no. Did I say carry on? Oh, it's just like a suitcase. Yeah, correct. Yeah, understood. They, they understood. I apologize. Not carry on. They 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 don't charge um, extra to check it in. So it sounds like the bicycle is going to Seattle. Or I may have may not have uh, rented bikes in San Diego and Seattle when we're out and there in August. Oh, that sounds fun. That's what I did. That sounds like a good idea. What's your advice to everybody watching the program right now? About? Anything in life. Yeah, when on Twitter, think before you post. <laughs> no big deal. No big deal. <laughs> That's true. You know, engage brain before you engage your thumbs. All good. Yeah. Um, how about um, we're going to see you next week? Monday you... or Wednesday? Next week, Wednesday. Wednesday. That's a bummer. So, so Wednesday is Scott. And, and Scott just texted us. He's got Taylor Averett on good, the show. Good, good, exciting. Great, great to hear. So he's going to sit in the seat. Greg's on Wednesday, excuse me, Friday in the seat with a couple of folks talking new construction. Nikki Chambliss is sitting in my seat on Monday because we're driving back. This Monday, Nikki. Yeah, this coming Monday, a week from today. Um... And uh, we'll be driving back Monday, and I'll be back at it uh, the following Wednesday in that end of it. I love it. I love I'm it. Working on some good round tables. Uh, I love our little Batman and Robins, but uh, we're, 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 re, we're bringing in some more 
round tables for uh, kind of fill out the summer on that stuff. So I'm excited about. I it. love it. I love it. The show was on dynamite today. Yeah, yeah. I, I love. What, what, what did I have? Three pieces of paper. And it's 11:33. Oh, look at that. Yeah. So uh, I had three pieces of paper, and I think we talked about it for about a minute or two, and, and then we, we, uh, we did it. But it was important for me to start off the show the way I did, so thank you. Thank you. Um, folks, this is one of the best shows in the country, and it's called Real Talk with Keith Smith. The show is archived on a website called realtalkwithkeithsmith.com, realtalkwithkeithsmith.com. Check out the website. All, all our shows yeah. archived on realtalkwithkeithsmith.com. Um, truly a fantastic program. Scott Morris, Taylor Averett on Wednesday, Greg Slater, Friday, Nikki Chambliss, Monday. I Love Seville shows later today in approximately 57 minutes, uh, where we're going to have a good time as well. Um, bravo, amigo. Yeah, yes. Back at you, brother. Couldn't, couldn't, do, couldn't do it without you. And uh, as you said in the beginning of it, I'm, I'm much better at the, at the uh, second seat than the first seat. You're, you're, you're A++++ plus 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 on the second from seat. From shooting the hip and bringing the perspective yeah. you have. Yeah. It's, and just being you. Yeah, it, but I, I, you know, I've only done it twice. I can't tell you. It is so hard to sit in that seat over there. It is really hard. Really hard, particularly for a guy that has ADD. So that's really hard for, for me to focus, focus on. Which, by the way, I have not formally said thank you to Judah. Three shot. Because Judah, uh, when I was... When was I on the? It was a week ago, right? Yeah, it was a week ago. Uh, uh, you know, he was kind enough to read the feed because I couldn't do it. Oh, very nice, Judah. Yep, he, he was yeah. kind. Enough. I like that he smart was, man. He was. I. I. I uh, I'm a. I'm a real good delegator, and I said, please. What did you do it with? Did you do it with Quentin? No. Uh, who, who, who? God, I can't remember. Who, oh no, it was Scott. It was Wednesday. Oh, Wednesday. It, was no, it wasn't Monday. It was Wednesday. Yeah. yeah. Right, and it was Scott. It was Scott and I. And uh, I had Judah uh, read a few questions out for us because I sure as heck couldn't follow it. Well, I thought it was a great show. Judah, you are always on point. Mr. Consistency is Judah Wickhauer. Um, Keith Smith is the distinguished gentleman. The show is archived on Real Talk with Keith Smith. Good My Lord, name is Jerry my Miller. Up and it's presented by Keller Williams Alliance and Yes Realty Partners. It's a real estate market that is um, one you need a trusted advisor. Absolutely. So. So look at this awesome website. Pull down the part, the partners thing. Please support all the partners that are on there. Uh, if it, without them, we wouldn't be having these conversations three times a week for four. What is it? Three hundred and forty. Forty-two now. Well, oh no, this is three forty-one. Today's three forty-one. Got it. Got it. Three. Well, now it's three forty. Well, it's three forty-one today. Yeah, Wednesday's three forty-two. Three forty-two. That's Same a lot of shows. Two. That's insane. Think about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's we, awesome. Yeah. We, I can't wait till 500. 500 is a is a serious milestone. Yeah, I, I have to map it out. I don't know when that actually is. I should look at a calendar and figure out when. So what are we about? A f we're call it a uh, 150 away. So yeah, so three it's per week times four. Yeah, there you go. I, I yeah, I can't do that math in my head. That it's but I don't think it's this year. I think it's next year. Yeah, it'll be next year. Next year, but we should do a special show for that. Oh, absolutely. Without spandex. Maybe down in the Caribbean. Huh? <laughs> no. <laughs> we'll do it down. Well, ex Mrs. Miller will love that. We'll do it down in the Caribbean. Oh, God. We'll do a live shot down there. What do you think, Judah? You in on that? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, Judah. And then, you know, you can travel with dogs now, so we'll bring Miss Liza down. And there you go. She'll have a lot of fun. Thank you for everything. Oh, guys. absolutely. Today's show is thank dynamite. You. Thank you. Thank um, you. I love Seville Show, guys, in 54 minutes. Keith Smith, Jerry Miller, Judah Wickhauer, thank you for joining us. We'll see you shortly. Take care, everyone. Well done. It was yeah. dynamite. It was fun. I had fun. It was dynamite. That's exactly how I wanted to uh, end, uh, end the last show.